So this is where we left off. Listening, please. This is where we left off. We had the diagram drawn. Now, it is possible, okay, that some people may have drawn the diagram this way, okay, or the triangle this way, where they'd have drawn it in here. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having drawn the triangle in there. The reason I don't do that is because it gets really crowded. It's overlapping all my other lines, and I try and avoid overlapping the lines whenever possible. So I drew mine outside over here, okay? Doesn't mean you won't get the right answer but you'll get the complementary angle and opposite direction of me, okay? I'm gonna get, when I'm done this, something like 52 degrees and it's gonna be uh, east of north, okay? Whereas if you drew the triangle where I've drawn the green one, you're gonna get 38 degrees north of east instead, okay? Both of those are correct because they're the same direction, okay? It's just from different references. I just like to draw my triangle outside where it's not as busy, okay? Go away, green lines. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so here's what we got. I've got to start calculating all the x's and all the y's. So I'll start out with my first vector, which was the 15 meter vector, 15 degrees north of east. Okay, so the x for that one is the adjacent side. So in that case, I will use the cos of 15 degrees times 15 meters. All right, so we got 14.489, we'll say. Meters, and that is east. I always put direction on my components so that I know when I'm finding the resultant whether I need to add or subtract, okay? All right, black Y is the opposite side. So that's gonna be the sine of 15 degrees times 15. All right, so that side is 3.882 meters. And that is north, all right? Everyone okay with what I'm doing so far? Okay, then my next step is to do the same thing for the red triangle. Now on the red triangle, the X component is the opposite side, all right? So for that one, I'm gonna use sine. So I'm gonna go sine of five degrees, times 13 meters, that's obviously gonna be a pretty small side. All right, so 1.133 meters. And that is gonna be west. Okay, and then the Y component is the adjacent side, so we'll use cos for that. Cos of five degrees times 13 meters. All right, we're looking at 12.95 meters. And that is also north. All right, so now I've found all the X's and all the Y's. All right, again, if I go back to my diagram, okay, if I take black X and add red X, which is negative, I'll get blue X. Everyone all right with that? And the same thing goes for the Y's. If I take black Y and red Y, they'll add up to blue Y. So that's my next step, is calculating okay, my resultants X and Y components. All right, so uh, blue X will be our 14.489 uh, plus negative 1.133, okay? Those are the two X components, and then my Y uh, is gonna be, uh, they're both added, so 3.882 plus 12.95. Neither, neither one of them is negative. Okay, so making sure I keep all of my uh, decimal places here, 14.4888739 plus um, 1.133024656. Okay, I can tell I'm gonna lose this number here, so I'm gonna write the rest of it. Yeah, I'm not, I'll, we'll work it out. Okay, um, so my resultants, and I forgot to make that negative, didn't I? Yes, I did.
Okay, so I'm looking at a resultant X here of 13.356. meters and that is east. Okay, so basically I can go back to my diagram and say that this equals 13.356 meters east. Okay, then I can calculate my y component. Okay, but I will have lost, I lost my number there, so I'll have to do it again. Um, okay, plus, um, my 12.95, and I lost it too. Okay. Nice. Um, plus, I'm just going to redo those two calculations, guys. Uh, cos of 5 times um, 13. Okay, so my overall y component is 16.833 meters. And that is north. Okay, is everybody with me there? Getting around the same numbers? Not not around exactly the same numbers. Okay. All right. So now that I know those, okay, so sixteen point what did we say eight three three. All right. Now we can calculate our overall displacement's magnitude and direction. So a Pythagorean theorem calculation, then a trig calculation, and we're done. Right, so the time-consuming part is finished. That's all the x's and y's. That's the time-consuming part. Okay, after that, okay, it's just uh, Pythagoras. So the displacement will be okay, uh, 13.356 squared plus 16.833 squared. Right, and that'll give me my overall displacement's magnitude. Okay, so my overall magnitude here is 21.48 or 49, 21.49 um, meters. Now I only have two significant figures here, so that's actually going to just be 21 meters okay, um, for my significant digits. So 21 meters, and then I'm going to calculate theta. Okay, theta I'm going to use tan for that, so I'm going to go tan to the minus one of 13.356 divided by my adjacent side, 16.833. You may have drawn the triangle the other way, and that's fine. If you did, you'll just get the complementary angle of, uh, sorry, 13.355.86273 divided by 16.83281. All right, so I'm getting 38.4 degrees, which I only have two significant figures, so 38 degrees for me. Okay, and my final answer comes out to the same thing they got, except that I got the complementary angle, which was 38 degrees east of north. Okay. She left you hanging, I saw that. Yeah. All right, questions on that one? Okay, guys, honestly, on a test, I probably wouldn't even ask one that hard. Okay, like typically on a unit exam, I would ask a question that would have one vector that's straight and one vector that's angled. All right, because really, these are a time consuming question. If I give you a question that's got five angled vectors on a unit exam, how much of the test do you spend doing that question? All of it. Yeah, you'll not, you won't finish anything else. And what does that tell me? Nothing. Okay. A question like this is much shorter and still tells me, okay, this person knows how to solve for vector components. They know how to add them together to get a resultant. They know how to calculate the resultant's magnitude and direction. And okay, you can prove that to me with a shorter question. The same fundamentals are still involved here, right? But obviously we want to practice with more difficult stuff, okay? So that on the test, okay, we can handle the stuff maybe like this. All right, questions there. Um, okay, I want you to try these ones. They start out stupid easy. They're like collinear, okay? Then it moves to perpendicular, and then by the end of this question, you're doing ones like we just did, right? Where, they'll, where they're gonna be um, 
sorry, no, these are all perpendicular. Okay, so these are all either collinear or perpendicular. So these ones are easy. You'll get through these pretty quickly, I would think. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to work on those, and then we'll go through a couple of them, see how we do, okay, and then uh, maybe try something a little tougher. So if, uh, which one was that, Skylar? D? Okay, so uh, for a question like D, and for any vector addition question for that matter, okay, uh, I have an 8 meter west vector, okay, and then I have a 5 meter north vector, okay, so it looks something like this when we draw it. And then we draw the resultant. And sometimes people say, oh, well, I'll just find this angle over here. The problem with that is, is that that's not the direction you went. That's the direction that would get you back to the beginning, right? You always want to find the angle that is around your starting point and facing your ending point, all right? So what I often say to people is do exactly this. When the whole diagram is done, circle your starting point. Wherever that circle goes through your triangle, that's the angle you want to find because that's the one that tells them how to get from beginning to end okay this angle doesn't tell them that okay it tells them how to get back once they're here and we don't want that one. okay does that make sense to everybody okay any of these giving us trouble so far we need to go over okay don't be afraid to ask guys okay so guys, I'm getting a number of questions here on G so I just want to illustrate something here okay if I go seven meters south Okay, then six meters east, and then eight meters north, right? I end up with this with this triangle here. All right. So um, what a lot of people have drawn, okay, is they're drawing this triangle. I try not to draw my triangles inside of my diagram because I find it gets too crowded. I find it gets too crowded. So I always draw my triangles outside. That's why my angle ended up as 81 degrees, but so many people are solving for this angle, which is like nine and a half degrees. That's fine. My angle is east of north. Your angle is north of east. That's fine. Okay. The other I illustration that we made here with that five and the eight, okay, was we were saying, um, if I find this angle, that doesn't tell them how to get from beginning to end. Both of these tell them how to get from beginning to end. Okay. This angle doesn't. Right. Instead of instead of being like these are both northeast, this one's not. It's like east of south or something. So it's not not at all right. Okay. So it's okay to have that. Okay. That one's fine. Okay. So for C, yes, both are acceptable. Because they both are like they're both in the case of C, they're both southeast, and in the case of D, they're both northwest. Okay. Yeah. And then, how do you how do you find the Oh, just uh, based on where the angle is. Okay. okay? So, um, if my angle is here, mm -hmm. right, this side is adjacent to the angle because the arc uh, is touching it. So it depends on which angle you want to find. Right. I am. Okay, so for 3C, guys, our diagram should look like this. We have an 8 meter east vector. And then we have a vector that's 6 meters long at 35 degrees north of east. So I need a reference line that's still due east, 35 degrees north of east. That might be more than 35, but it'll do. Okay, this one happened, then the red one happened. And our overall displacement is that green line. And you can draw the triangle above it, or you can draw it on top of the others. It doesn't make any difference. Okay? Um, if you draw it above, uh, you will get the answer I got. If you draw it below, you'll get the complementary angle okay, of 15 degrees instead of 75. All right. Okay, so if we're doing our solution here for this diagram, okay, uh, I'm assuming that probably most people drew it opposite to me, so I'll draw it that way as well. Okay, so looking like that. Um, so the trick with one like this is that our eight meter long vector doesn't have a what? Which component is it missing? 
If it's eight meters due east, it doesn't go north or south. So it has no y component, okay? Which saves you a lot of calculating because you don't have to calculate anything for the x and y components for this one. The x component is eight and the y component is zero. It doesn't go vertically. Uh, we do have to do the calculations, however, for the red one. Okay, the x component will be this side, the y component will be this side. All right. uh, so, obviously, then for our eight meter long vector, the x component is 8.0 meters east, the y component is zero. Okay, we can't even put a direction on that because there's nothing. All right, for our x component for the red one, it's the adjacent side, so we'll go cos of 35 degrees times six. Okay, and for our y component, uh, we'll go sine of 35 times 6, because it's the opposite side. Whoops. Okay, is, uh, so 4.915 meters east. Right, and 3.441 meters north. All right, so that's what I've got for all my x's and all my y's. A lot faster, like way faster, right, than having to find two that are angled. So uh, now I can find green x, which will be here, and green y is easy because red y and green y have to be equal since the black vector had no y component, okay? The only time we went north was with the red one, all right? So again, that also saves us time in calculating because we have less to calculate. All right, so our x component is gonna be 8.0 meters plus 4.915 meters. So we're gonna get our 12.91 whatever here. Um, so 12.9149. Okay, uh, meters, and that'll be east. Okay, and then our y component is simply going to be the 3.441 uh, meters north. So now we can calculate our overall displacement because we have the two sides. So that'll be Pythagorean theorem. So 12.9 squared plus 3.4 squared. Obviously, with all the decimals in place, we wouldn't okay, we wouldn't do this if we didn't have all the decimals, right? Uh, and so we're going to get uh, for that 13 meters, I think, because we only have two significant figures. Yeah. Okay, and then we calculate the angle, okay? And that's gonna be, for me, because I'm taking tan here, okay? The opposite side is the 3.441 divided by the 12.915. And when I do that, I should get 15 degrees north of east. If I do it the other way, then obviously I get 75 degrees east of north. Okay, everybody all right with that? Okay, so that's what you could expect on a unit exam. On a quiz, I'd probably give you one harder than that. Okay, I'd give you one with two angled vectors right, for you to solve, but okay, something along those lines. All right, um, give number, or give D a try since it's pretty much the same thing. The thing with D, guys, is um, you really have to be mindful of scale. In D, scale is important. If you're not careful with your scale, you will get a diagram that lies to you, okay? Because you'll do all your math and the math, you'll look at it and go, well, that's not what my picture says. And then of course, you'll do what we said before. You'll assume you drew the, you'll, that you did the math wrong, but more than likely you drew the picture wrong. So really look at scale, especially the angle on that one. Okay, just want to throw the diagram up here for this one so you see it, okay? Um, and like I was saying, it's really important that we, re we reflect scale properly in this diagram. This line is 12 meters south. That's our first vector. Our next vector is east of north, 55 degrees. So I actually need to draw my reference line right back up the 12 meter long vector, okay? Because that's north, all right? This, this line, the red dotted line I just drew is going north, right? Um, I need to go 55 degrees. That's more than halfway down to east. And that's the mistake most people make on this is they draw an angle that's very steep when it should be way over here, okay? So my angle should look like this. And uh, I didn't even draw that one long enough, but anyway. All right, that's 55 degrees. And this red line is longer than my 12 meter line. 
okay, as it should be. But what I see most often on this one is people do this and then they go like that, okay? They go right past or they make the most astronomically unlikely assumption possible. Oh, it makes a right angle triangle, that's convenient. Yeah, it is pretty convenient way too convenient that'll never freaking happen okay that's just not going you're not going to be that lucky okay life's just not like that um so just make sure you're reflecting scale okay um and doing a good job of that because otherwise like i say your diagram is going to lie to you okay your math will not but your diagram will okay so that means our overall resultant needs to look like this it is actually going to be south of where it started Okay, so there will be our angle, there will be our overall displacement, x, y. Okay, obviously the 12 meter one only has a y component, okay, the red one has an x and a y.